Hi everyone, happy new year. I know I have been MIA for months, but I'm back and this is to hoping that 2024 is going to be a better year for us all and hopefully I will be consistent on this channel. Don't hold me to it, but I'll try. I'll try. So we're going to kick off the new year with this video, which is going over how to apply for a US student visa, an F1 visa. If you're watching this video, my assumption is that you've gotten accepted into a school or multiple schools. If that is the case, congratulations. If however that isn't the case and you're just watching, you know, in preparation for when you would get there, I really hope that some positive news comes your way. Without further ado, let us jump right into the video. So to apply for a student visa, the very first thing that you need to do is to request for a document called the I-20 from your school. Now this I-20 is very important because it contains all the relevant information about you and your school. So it has things like your name, your date of birth, your course of study, um, your service ID number. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, your school address, your designated school official, basically all of the information that you would need when filling out a visa application form. So make a request for an I-20 from your school, provide all the necessary documents um, needed to get this I-20. So the next thing that you have to do is fill out the non-immigrant visa application form, which is called the DS-160 form. I will leave the direct link to the website where you go to fill this form in the description box. So be sure to check that out. When you go on this website, um, the first thing that you have to do is select the location where you'll be applying um, for your visa from. So this can either be your home country if you live there and you have a US embassy or um, consulate or the like neighboring country where you'll be applying from. If there are multiple consulates or embassies in your country, you need to select the specific one from where you would be applying. So when you do that, you'd also be prompted to select two security questions that would allow you, you know, log in again if you need to do that. Select these questions, you know, provide an answer, make sure you remember the answers to these questions and start your application. When you begin your application, you're going to get a unique um, application ID. It's a combination of letters and numbers. Take a screenshot, take a picture, write this down somewhere, save this. So keep this information with you because you're going to need it if you have to save your application and come back um, to restart your application at a later day. So like I already alluded to, you don't have to sit and fill out the entire application form at once. You can always save it and you know restart. Something very important to keep in mind is that a saved form is only valid for 30 days. So if you start your application today, and you save it, you need to log back in and like retrieve that application in the next 30 days for it to be valid. If you do not do this, that application is going to be deleted from the system and you would need to start again. However, this 30 day period is reset every time you log in. So for example, if you start your, if you start your application today and then you come back in one week, log in, the 30 days is going to start counting again one week later when you've logged in, not from today. Now just go through the different sections um, in the application form. They ask for your personal information, like school information, information that you can get from your um, I-20. They may also ask about like work experience and things like that. If you have any, um, you know, like countries you've traveled to, to, all of these things, just fill everything carefully and correctly. Now this is very, very important. When I say I'm really emphasizing filling it out correctly with correct information, because sometimes during your interview, stuff that you've mentioned in your application form might be asked right and you need to provide a response that tallies with what the visa officer is seeing that you filled out when you get to the tail end you'll be asked to upload a passport picture the u.s visa interview passport picture um size is a two by two so two inches by two inches, two by two inches. Um, so you need to like take a picture like that. If you maybe live in a country where you can't really get that, you can honestly take this picture on your phone, just like take a nice picture of their um, resizing tools online that you can use to resize your passport picture if like the website doesn't accept it. Now, when you get to the very end, 
you can submit your application somewhere before submitting your application you have the option of saving this application um, form offline as a pdf document i strongly strongly suggest that you do this so just click that option you click that option you, the application form containing your responses is downloaded to your computer now this is important because when you're prepping for your interview like i said you need to make sure that your responses on that form tally to what you're saying so if you feel like you might forget some of the things that you filled in the form it's always good to have that backup you know go look through and say oh okay this is what i said in my application this is what i should definitely say at my interview after submitting your application you will be given um a page a confirmation page that contains a barcode it also contains this like unique application id it has your passport picture on there save this page so print it save it because it's also one of the documents that you would need during your visa application it's very very important though keep in mind that i said you can start your application stop you know come back to it within 30 days one very important thing is that you need to finally submit your application at least 72 hours before your interview date. This is very, very important so you don't run into problems. It's one of the requirements um, by the US embassies or like by the US government. Your application form has to be submitted at least 72 hours before your interview date. Next thing that you have to do is to pay the application fee. You can either pay this online if that option is available in your country or you can pay at the designated bank for the US um, embassy or consulate in your country. And this is something that you can look up pretty easily, you know, just go online, Google like pay US visa fee and your country name. In Nigeria, for example, this bank is GT Bank. Um, so if you have that option available in your country, you will be able to pay in your local currency. Right now, the visa application fee is $185, but you know, just look at that because it might change over time. After your application fee has been paid, the next thing that you have to do is schedule an interview. Now to do this, you need to go on a different website, the US Travel Docs website. I would also have that linked in the description box so you can just follow the link directly, you know, and just get to this website. So when you go on this website, follow the link for a non-immigrant visa because the F1 student visa is a non-immigrant visa. So follow this link, log in, create a profile, and um, provide the required information, then schedule an interview, go from there. Um, I know in Nigeria, usually we do our biometrics on the same day as the interview, but if you're, if you're from a country where the biometrics um, and interview are done on separate days, on this same website, you'd have the opportunity to, or you'll have the option to select what day you want to go for your biometrics and what day you want to go for your visa interview. So just, you know, follow the process, follow the instructions. It's pretty self-explanatory. After scheduling your interview, um, you need to pay your service fee, S-E-V-I-S, -E service. So the service fee is like a one-time payment of $350 that you pay to the US government to like help keep track of your information. It's like a student and exchange visitors fee. So, um, it's a one-time payment when they keep track of you, your records, all of that, making sure that you're actually going to school, you're in status and all of that. If it's available in your country, you can make this payment via Western Union. Um, if not, then you like have to figure out a way, find someone in the US to help you make this payment. But just keep in mind that, you know, service fee is something that has to be paid. Almost similar to submitting your application form, your service fee needs to be paid at least 72 hours before your interview. If you're like me, I would advise to be even extra cautious and just make sure that the 72 hours doesn't include the weekend, right? So if you have like an interview maybe on Monday, I would not wait until Thursday or Friday to pay my service fee. I would try to pay it like latest Tuesday or Wednesday just to give myself like three full working days for that seven service fee to get processed because there's nothing more annoying than getting to your interview and you're like actually we don't see um you know the payment of your service fee so you can get interviewed but yeah keep that in mind you need to make this payment at least 72 hours before your interview now when all the forms and applications and payments are done what is really left for you is to prep and wait for your interview. So if you have no idea where to start, what to expect, you're in luck because I have an entire video that goes over most of the frequently asked questions and how to answer them. I'm going to link that video here, so be sure to check it out. 
after you go for your interview, it's successful, congratulations, all is great. Um, for most people, you really just have to like go pick up your visa or your, um, go pick up your passport with your visa or this is going to get sent to you. However, for a couple of individuals from specific countries, you need to pay something called the reciprocity fee or visa insurance fee. Um, it applies for a very small number of countries. I'm not sure what they are. Just look it up. Um, double check to see if your country is one of those that have um, a reciprocity fee. Um, if you have, if your country has this, then the final payment that you have to make is for this reciprocity fee. Make the payment, get your visa, and you'll be well on your way to constantly in the US. Yeah, that's it. That's it for this video. Um, the process you know, if you have no idea what the process is about, it can be quite confusing, but I hope that this video has helped to clarify and outline step by step what you need to do. Don't forget to check out the description box because I'm going to have the links to the relevant websites um, that you need for this process. Finally, before I go, please leave me comments and suggestions on the kind of videos that you would like to see on this channel because I don't really know what people are interested in or what they would like to see. It doesn't only have to be like grad school related or like visa related. Please let me know what kind of videos you would like to see. Give me specific recommendations and I will try to work on them. Thank you so much for sticking around. If you found this video useful, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.